Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. So we understand the volatility of the dollar Canada, typically. We also understand that that typical 40 to 110 range with the average being about 70, we're, we're, we're beating the heck out of that pretty often here as we're dealing with the volatility near parity. I may not be comfortable with spot. I can certainly get in with an option. I could take advantage of the fact that I think we could break parity come summer with the rise in crude oil prices. Now let's take the flip side of that. And here's what's great about options. I can go buy puts based upon my feeling of prices sometime in say June or July heading below 100. What if I feel that parity is going to hold? What if I feel that the price that we've seen in crude oil, this rally that we've seen overall in crude already, isn't going to go much higher? What if I feel this is it for crude, that, that a lot of this bullishness we already saw is not going to lend itself well to a summer rally? What if I feel that way? Let's take the other side of this. What if, what if we take a look at past February, March, and April, okay, and see if maybe the run-up that we've had here says, oh, we're, we're at the top here near 85. Who knows? Who knows? Could we see prices higher than 85? I don't know. The market seems to have found a pretty good, what is almost a 50% retracement from the visit up to 150 at this area. So what, what if on the flip side we feel that, you know what, parity is the floor. People out there who have a bearish opinion of crude versus that summer rally bullish opinion of crude, let's say crude's stuck here. And it's not, and if anything, let's say it's going to go down. What's that going to do to my, to my chart of the dollar Canada? So we're going to base here. So what, what you'd be looking to do, basically, is on those down days and those days that were flat and were quiet along parity, You'd be looking for what? Instead of puts, expecting a break below parity, you'd be expecting parity to hold as a floor, and you'd be looking for calls. You can do both because there's probably a pretty good argument for both those scenarios that I just painted. I think that the parity argument right now does not necessarily hold water, but in 45 days we could be seeing a completely different trend based upon crude oil. And the overall trend is down. Even though it's been testing uh, my cycle indicator, which I'm going to show you here in just a moment, the overall trend is down. How do we determine markup, markdown, accumulation, distribution? This part's pretty easy. I've talked about it before in past ISC discussions. You can go, definitely go check out the archive, but this is how I do it. I put three moving averages on my chart. By the way, this blue moving average out here, that's the 200 period simple moving average. There probably is no indicator that's more well followed than a 200 period simple moving average. I'm not saying it's the best tool in the world. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying more people on the planet probably watch that particular tool on that particular setting than anything else. 200 period simple. So if it's that psychologically relevant, it would behoove me to watch it. Yes? Okay, so these three lines you see people call them bands and so forth. This is what I call the wave, the 34 EMA wave. Uh, I'm a big believer in Fibonacci, and it kind of comes to fruition here. So the 34 EMA wave. I wish I would have called it something else. I wish I would have named it after myself. I called it the wave here in my office when I was sitting here talking to my dog for so many years and talking back at the, at the TV. I just called it the wave because uh, I've been surfing since uh, skipping a lot of class in high school and I used to do a lot of diving, so I love the water, and so that's where the that's where the, the wave comes from. Okay, but what it is is the 34 period EMA is exponential moving average, one set on the high, one set on the low. So again, a 34 period EMA on the low, and then a 34 
period TMA set on a close. So this first one here is what you'll see in red, I'm sorry, in, uh, in green on my chart. The low is in red and the close is in blue. And oftentimes you'll hear me refer to these as grab chart. Because I literally have my candles painted with a plug and running on my e-signal. I also have this running on my MetaTrader 4 called grab, green, red, and blue. And it, all it does is it paints the candle in relation to the close of, of the wave. Like if the candles close below the 34 EMA low, my candles plot red. If the candles plot within the wave, between the high and the low, they plot blue. And if they're above it, they plot green. So very visually, I can tell what a neutral market looks like. It goes blue. What a bearish market looks like, it goes red. And what a bullish market looks like, it goes green. Some people might look at this range right here. Some people might look at this range right here and just say that it's just bouncing in between. But I'll, I'll actually identify and say, OK, there's bearishness, there's neutral, 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 bearish, bullish, all within this range that some people would just kind of dismiss as simply being range bound action, just being congestion or consolidation, which it very, very well might be. But I can get an idea of the sentiment within it. OK? And that's my wave, these three moving averages. Now, depending upon the angle that they are moving, and this is not necessarily the most objective tool in the world, but I can add up to objectivity by using, this is how we add objectivity to taking uh, wave, what I call clock angle readings. You have to use a consistent look back. Each time frame has a look back, or what I call a market memory. All right. I have to view the wave within that look back. For the daily chart, it's one year. Okay. So I want to look at the angle of the wave within a look back of one year. So here's about a year right there. And I can see how steep past markdown cycles have been. I can see how shallow some of these markup cycles, arguably distribution, have been. But overall, you can see the market has stayed a majority of the time red, very little, very little time in green, and some time in neutrality. But for the most part, it continues to hold, hold a, a, a markdown cycle based upon the angle, the four, what I call the 4 to 6 o'clock angle of this wave, and the fact that, I'm, again, I'm plotting a majority of these candles in red, bearish sentiment. Right now, we're trying to go blue. This looks like it might be a neutral candle, as, uh, as this current candle is blue. So when the market is heading at what I call 12 to 2, and literally imagine 12, 3, and 6 o'clock on your chart. 12 to 2 is an uptrend or a markup cycle. 3 o'clock is a flat or accumulation cycle. 4 to 6 is a downtrend. Okay? That leaves finally 2 to 4, where the market is not steep enough to be an uptrend or downtrend, and it's not flat enough to be accumulation. There's more range, there's more volatility. That's our that's distribution. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.